Good morning, dear hearts. Uh, we are on 167. I laughed because Buster was right over there and as the camera came on, he left. I guess I didn't talk to his agent. Um, there is one life and that I share with God. Lesson 167, please subscribe. One life. One is the, the integral number for the course. There is one mind, there is one life, there is one truth, there is one love. These are ideas, concepts, thoughts that have no opposite. They are as they are and will forever be as they are. And there is one life and that is the life that we share with God, our source. The lesson begins that there are not different kinds of life for life is like the truth and love and mind. It does not have degrees. It is the one condition in which all that God created share. Like all his thoughts, and thoughts are capitalized, and all of his thoughts are eternal, which is why we have a capital there, it has no opposite. There is no death, because what God created shares his life. There is no death, because an opposite to God does not exist. There is no death because the father and the son, the child, are one. There is no death. We had lesson 163. There is no death. The son of God is free. The child of God is free. There is no death. There is nothing that's coming to claim us and put us into a prison of a limited thought, which is what death is. In this world, there appears to be a state that is life's opposite. You call it death. Yet we have learned that the idea of death takes many forms. This is a very important paragraph that I'm going to read here. We have learned the idea of death takes many forms. It is the one idea that underlies all feelings that are not supremely happy. A janitism, okay? Death is not the lack of breath, it is the lack of joy. And that's what this paragraph upholds. Any idea that is not supremely happy, it is death is the alarm to which you give response of any kind that is not perfect joy, all sorrow, loss, anxiety, and suffering, and pain, and even a little sigh of weariness, a slight discomfort, or the merest frown, acknowledge death, and thus deny you live. And how many times have we heard someone say when they are in a difficult situation, this is killing me. And yes, it is because we are in a situation that we are looking at only from an ego point of view. We are seeing the situation merely as a form thought. A form thought comes from the ego mind and those thoughts of form will go away. Those thoughts of form are the thoughts that die. You think that death is of the body, yet it is but an idea irrelevant to what is seen as physical. A thought is in the mind. It can be then applied as mind directs it. Remember, this body thing is just like a marionette and does whatever part, which mind is ruling it. Is it the ego mind or is it my holy mind? but its origin is where it must be changed if change occurs. The idea must be changed at the origin, the source of its thought. Ideas leave not their source. The emphasis this course has placed on that idea is due to its centrality and our attempts to change your mind about yourself. It's the reason you can heal. It's the cause of healing. It is why you cannot die. Its truth established you as one with God. This is uh, this phrase. You've heard me say it many times. You will hear it many, many more. I'm sure it is repetitive within the course, but the course is repetitive because this is one of the ways that we learn this course. Remember, we are, we learn it. It's taught to us. We have the experience of it. Um, and we, in this case, uh, 
we also have a revelation. We can have a revelation. The revelation of that we are part of God and always will be, that would be something that would be revealed to us. And then we will hopefully let it sink down within the middle of our mind and our heart and understand that that is what is true. And none of this other, these other thoughts that we've been having are because these other thoughts are in from form and they are illusions and they are dreams and they're simply going to come and go. Death is the thought that you are separate from your creator. It is the belief conditions can change and emotions alternate because of causes you cannot control. But ideas, and it, it's the idea that um, it's the fixed belief that indeed an idea can leave its source and take on qualities the source does not contain. Death cannot come from life. Ideas remain united to their source. This lesson restates that several times. Ideas leave not their source. Um, a mind can think it sleeps, but that is all. It cannot change what is its waking state. There are two conditions for the mind. Mind awake and mind asleep, but God creates only mind awake, and he does not sleep, and his creations cannot share what he gives not. What he doesn't provide, we don't have. He does not provide us with a body, nor make conditions which he does not share with them. The thought of death is not the opposite to thoughts of life. Forever unopposed by opposites of any kind, the thoughts of God remain forever changeless. They leave not their source. With the power to extend forever changelessly, yet within themselves, for they are everywhere. We are everywhere. We are expansive. The idea of us, we were a creative thought from the mind of God, and all creative thoughts continue to expand. So we are indeed everywhere. Um, and that might be hard to understand. I get that. Okay, what seems to be the opposite of life is merely sleeping. When the mind elects to be what it is not and to assume an alien power which it does not have, a foreign state it cannot enter or a false condition not within its source, this is not what God has created. These are things that we have made. It merely goes to sleep a while. So earlier in the text, it tells us that, you know, the Bible talks about the great sleep that fell over Adam, but nowhere does it say that he woke up. This is us in our belief in this form that we are in. We have fallen asleep. We were created mind awake, but we had an alien thought. We had that, you know, uh, that thought that we were somehow different, uh, the uh, tiny mad idea. And in that tiny mad idea, we fell asleep. So, and we've been having these dreams, these illusions ever since. It, we, we dream of time, an interval in which what seems to happen never occurred because these are all illusions. They never occurred. The changes that happen are substance less and all events are nowhere when the mind awakes it but continues as it always was when we awaken we will not remember all of the dreams these ego dreams and adventures that we have been having we will forget all of those dreams all of those illusions they will be let go they will be no more and the mind awake will not remember what it doesn't know. And the mind awake does not know of our dreams and our illusions. So paragraph 10 says, let us today be children of the truth and not deny our holy heritage. Our life is not as we imagine it. Who changes life because he shuts his eyes or makes himself what he is not because he sleeps and sees in dreams and opposite to what he is. We will not ask for death in any form today. We will not go to sleep today and dream these wild dreams that are less than joyful. 
We will not ask for death in any form today, not even a little sigh, nor will we let imagined opposites to life abide even an instant where the thought of life eternal has been set by God himself within our holy mind. The thought of life itself has been placed there by our father, our source, our celestial parent. His holy home, our holy home, we strive to keep today as God established it and wills it be forever and forever. God is Lord of what we think today and in his thoughts, which have no opposite, we understand there is one life and that we share with him, with all creation, all living things, with their thoughts as well, whom he created in a unity of life that cannot separate in death and leave the source of life from where it came. We share one life because we have one source, a source from which perfection comes to us, remaining always in the holy minds that God created perfect. A sleeping mind must waken as it sees its own perfection, mirroring the Lord of life so perfectly that it fades into what is reflected there. And now it is no more a mere reflection. It becomes the thing reflected. And we have had this image, this metaphor of this mirror and the light which makes reflections possible. That is us. We are the light of the world. No vision now is needed for the wakened mind is one that knows its source, its self, its holiness. That's it for today. I hope that helped. Um, so there is one life. There is one mind. There is one God. There is one love. There is one name that we call upon. There is one self. There is one brother who is all brothers. And one is indeed enough. One is all we need. So please like, please share, please subscribe, please comment, please smile when this beautiful, beautiful awareness and uh, breathe it in, release everything that is not and um, pray for these awarenesses to dawn on every mind as quickly as possible. Namaste.